There were 11 year models of first generation square body Chevy S10. And on the surface, they pretty much all look the same, but not all the parts are interchangeable. So I figure let's share some information that might help you out next time you head to the junkyard to say, pick a part. <laughs>now some of y'all might be thinking why don't you just use the vin number to identify the year model but not every s10 has a legible vin number when you get to a junkyard besides i've been told multiple times how to read a vin number but i've got the memory of a 50 year old and well i don't can't remember now this conversation is going to be limited to the S-Series pickup trucks only, mainly because I don't know enough about the Blazer and the Jimmy to feel like I'm giving you accurate information. Now a lot of times when you go to the junkyard, all the parts are not on the truck you're looking at, so it helps to have multiple ways to identify the year model of the truck anyway. Well, it's because if you're driving a square body S10, it is at least 29 years old. So next year, It'll be 30 years old, and in the state I live in, means that every single square body S10 will qualify for an antique license plate come January. More importantly than that, unless you happen to be the original owner of that S10, or maybe got it from a family member who is still around to answer questions, you might not have all of the repair history of that vehicle. Case in point is the daily death trap. The previous owner told me that he replaced the rear end on that truck, but I have no idea what year the rear end came out from under because the rear ends fit, but the parts on say the brakes are not all the same. So here's a brake drum off the stupid truck, which is an 88. It looks pretty rough because it's been sitting out in the weather for a couple of years. But let's compare that to one that's slightly newer. Here's a brake drum off a of 92. It looks like that because it's been sitting on a shelf at AutoZone. What you need to look at is this little lip right here, which does not exist right here. So an 88 and a 92 have different brake drums. The difference is are also visible when you look at it from the side. Those two brake drums are different part numbers. If you try to put the 88 on the 92, it's gonna scrub, and it's probably gonna create so much heat that it messes up your rear axle seal. Don't ask me how I know that. So I had planned on just doing that little short clip about the brake drums, but that same day that I planned on doing that video, the s Tentatious channel dropped a video about year model identifications using the interior mount points for the door handle location. So that sparked me to do a more in-depth video. I'd tell you what information he shared in that video, but you'd get way more out of it if you just went and watched his video. Now from 1982 to 1990, this is the brake drum that GM used on the rear of the S10 series. In 91, some of them had that same brake drum and some of them had this newer version with the lip on the edge. Now in 92, all of them were this. I don't know if that was carried over into the second gen or not, but we're not talking about second generation S10s. So now that we've covered that, Let's talk about a few other things that might help you out when you get to a junkyard. Now, some extended cabs have a sealed back window. Others have a vented back window. But you can't use that to identify a year model because the vented back window has been an option ever since 83 when the extended cab was released. But I guess you can knock 1982 off the list if you're looking at an extended cab. 82 to 85, the S10 had a flat dash that looked sort of like this. In 86, that dash was upgraded to this model, which has the shelf underneath it. 
Now let's be clear. It is possible that that dash upgrade happened over multiple years. So there may be 86s out there that have either or dash. I don't know, but I have a lifelong buddy who says his 86 had that flat dash. And I do remember the flat dash, but I can't guarantee what year it was. I would think he would know it's his truck. In 82, the lenses on the gauges had uh, came out to a point, sort of like a booby. They call them booby gauges. Now those were the only lenses in 82. In 83, it could be a flat lens like this, or it could be the booby gauge. But in 84, they were all flat. So that means this truck is an 83 to 85 at the most. Now the original tailgate in the S10 had a shape that looked sort of like that. But somewhere around 1991, the inside of the tailgate changed to this shape which a lot of people refer to as the two-butt seat. Now, there seems to be some debate as to when the S10 went from an embossed lettering on the tailgate to a smooth tailgate with a sticker. A lot of people like the sticker because they can pull it off and then they have an unbranded tailgate. But I can tell you this. This tailgate came off a of 91. And this tailgate is obviously a 92. But that does not mean that that's when it happened. It could have been a transition over multiple years. I don't know. So if you have an embossed tailgate that is newer than 91, please throw that in the comments. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 91 or 92, GM upgraded the structural integrity of the inside of the doors and they added a NASCAR style roll bar round pipe in that door. That door panel has a dent right there and you can see where that bar is from that NASCAR style upgrade. And no matter what Jason Bacon wants to tell you, those dents were not caused by alligator wrestling. In 1991, they replaced the three piece grill which had a headlight bezel, a bezel, and a center grill. They replaced that with a one-piece grill that is all the way across the truck. At the same time, they got rid of the upper filler panel that's between the bumper and the grill. But let's be honest. By the time you get to the junkyard, that truck probably ain't got a door, a tailgate, or a grill on it. So that's why I'm going to share this one last piece of information with you. Now, I don't know what year this happened, but you see this top plate right here stops right here. Then you've got your outer skin and an inside structural support. This is on an 88, and it's exactly like the 83 to 85 out front. Now, if we come over to the death trap, which is a 92, you can see that that plate still stops right here but they've added another structural plate on top of that. So you've got your outer skin and your inner skin, just like the other vehicles, but now you have an added plate of stability right here. Now, I don't know when that happened. I assume it happened about the same time that they did the door panels with the NASCAR style roll bar inside, but I also know how to spell assume. I want to say thank you to S. Tentatious for giving me the idea to do a more in-depth video instead of just that little short one, and Hardcore Garage Channel for fact-checking this video for me and acquiring information, and Pete's S. Ten page for all that extra information. Now, when I can't find the answer to an S. Ten related question, I usually call Johnny Garage Johnson, but when Johnny can't find the answer, he calls Pete. And if Pete don't already know the answer, that's okay. Because he's pretty much got every piece of literature GM ever made about the S10. Look, when it comes to S10 knowledge, we all have somebody we got to call every now and then when we can't find the answer. And that's what makes the S10 community one big, happy, dysfunctional family. Peace, love, and many trucks. Yeah.